This We 670 production was made in collaboration with Pacifica Insurance Underwriters, insuring and ushering the CNMI since 1973. Stay tuned to learn about Pacifica's Go Green initiatives and how they are helping to propel our islands toward a more eco-friendly and sustainable future. Thank you so much to Pacifica Insurance Underwriters for helping us make this content for you. We would also like to express our deepest gratitude to our lovely patrons for their generous contributions. If you would like to support the efforts of We670, as well as gain access to exclusive patron-only bonus and behind-the-scenes content, head over to patreon.com We670. The following excerpts were taken from History of the Northern Mariana Islands by Don A. Farrell, Ancient Chamorro Society by Lawrence J. Cunningham, and an article entitled the Ancient Chamorros by Paul Carano. The small outrigger canoes of the Chamorros were the admiration of all the early navigators. Indeed, more was written in their journals about the canoes of the natives than any other aspect of Chamorro culture. One of the first Europeans to describe Chamorros and their canoes said of them, Their amusement, men and women, is to plow the seas with those small boats of theirs, those boats resemble full, sir, but are narrower, and some are black, some white, and others red. At the side opposite the sail, they have a large piece of wood pointed at the top, with poles laid across it and resting on the water, in order that the boats may sail more safely. The sail is made from palm leaves sewn together and is shaped like a latin sail. For rudders, they use a certain blade resembling a hearth shovel, which has a piece of wood at the end. They can change stern and bow at will, and those boats resemble the dolphins, which leap in the water from wave to wave. Because of the great speed attained by these small canoes, early writers called them flying proas. The Chamorros also used a type of canoe that was much larger than the proa. These large canoes, sometimes 30 to 40 feet in length, were used for commerce, ceremonial occasions, and warfare. The building of large sailing canoes was a highly prized privilege of the Matua, who prided themselves on their skill at carpentry. Sometimes they were assisted in the work by members of the middle class, but members of the lowest class were forbidden to engage in such work. The privilege of steering such canoes was held exclusively by the chiefly class and was jealously guarded by them. A reporter on Legaspi's expedition gave an excellent description of the proas. Whenever one attempts a description of the canoes, one cannot but ceaselessly praise their skillful velocity and maneuverability, for in all the universe, methinks, that naught could prove their equal for beauteous celerity. When they demonstrate their mastery of the waves, verily they do resemble flying darts, and no steed could better heed the driver's reins than they, nor swifter move. For even as we maneuvered the short distance of a harbequist's shot, they had spun about six times. This would have proved impossible had they not had a counterbalance, a kind of help from the wind in the form of a pole about three arms length, which extended from canoe hull into the water and was fastened thereon sans nails, but rather sewn or lashed fast by means of cords and wooden pegs, all lined and stained with the red ochre. Some of these crafts are large as any frigate, and tall both four, and aft so that the stern is hardly distinguished from the prow. Oft they serve the same end, for the crew who by a turn of the graceful latine sails change course with ease and turn prow to stern. So small the frail masts and so simple the gear that the Indians command a veritable frigate and navigate into the wind with a facility till now unknown to us. The ancient Chamorro outrigger canoe had a very sophisticated design, and the ancient Chamorros had a successful navigation system too. Laura Thompson, an anthropologist who studied Chamorro culture, claimed the outrigger canoe best expressed the spirit and creativity of the Chamorros. She felt the flying proa demonstrated that the ancient Chamorros were not just gatherers, farmers, and tool makers, but also were spontaneous, gleeful, and playful. A typical outrigger canoe was 26 to 28 feet long and less than 2 feet wide. 
war canoes ranged up to 40 feet in length. The long, deep, narrow hull served as a keel. A canoe this size would often have a crew of five to seven men or women. The smaller canoe hulls were made out of the trunk of a breadfruit tree. Usually, they started with a single dugout tree trunk and built up the sides with planks. Most canoes were three to five feet deep. The planks were lashed together with coconut fiber, roped, and caulked. A coarse braid of coconut fiber rope was covered with a putty made of powdered quicklime and coconut oil or boiled down breadfruit sap. It is interesting to note how different ancient Chamorro and modern watercraft are. Today, people try to overcome nature by building strong, sturdy boats. Sometimes the forces of nature are too strong, and modern boats are broken beyond repair. The ancient Chamorro outrigger canoe was designed in harmony with nature. It was lashed together. It could give instead of breaking. If it did break, it would do so at the lashed points so it could easily be repaired, even at sea. Modern man tends to view nature as an enemy that must be conquered. The ancient Chamorros saw that they were part of nature and had to live in harmony with nature. The ancient Chamorros had a navigation system that allowed them to sail out of the sight of land and return. The ancient Chamorros used wind, waves, and stars to navigate. Birds, clouds, swells, and even phosphorescence in the water could lead them to a safe landfall. Thousands of years before Leif Erikson or Columbus sailed the Atlantic, the Chamorros were sailing in the open ocean waters of the Pacific. They probably reached the Mariana Islands around 2000 BC. George Anson, a British explorer of the Mariana Islands in 1742, recognized just what an extraordinary invention the flying proa was. He admitted that any nation, no matter how skillful and intelligent, would be proud of such a technological accomplishment. These canoes sailed better and faster than any in the world at that time. They passed the other ships like a bird flying by. The proa serves as a symbol of exploration and adventure for the people of the Marianas, both in ancient and modern times. It is the precursor to the many ways in which we have evolved, adapted, and acquired our methods of movement. While the proa provided us the ability to navigate the waters, we developed and adopted new ways of working and exploring the land, such as the caretanguaca, a form of transportation which utilizes a cart that is pulled by a bull or an ox. This method was introduced to the ancient Chamorros by the Spanish and was used mainly to transport goods and supplies, but eventually became an important component in many different Chamorro traditions, such as weddings and funerals. Following the bull cart came railroads, streetcars, automobiles, ships, and planes. In the 21st century, we in the Marianas are still looking to be adventurous and explore, but the world we live in is very different than that of our ancestors. We have new problems and concerns, as well as new possibilities presented to us, and are trying to discover how we can honor our legacy of movement while also conserving and preserving our land and the planet. Although we have yet to arrive to a comprehensive answer to these questions, we are making strides where we can, and we are tentatively moving towards a future where the methods in which we move will exhibit the ease and convenience of modern technology while also honoring the spirit and sustainability of the motion of our ancestors. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the We 670 podcast, an exploration of the history, cultures, and lifestyles of the Northern Mariana Islands. My name is Mark, and I will be your host. And in this episode, I am joined with a shiny new guest, Shigeki Tenorio. Hello, Shigeki. Thank you so much Hi. for being here. Thank you. I, I put this on everyone to kind of describe themselves. So if, 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 if you want to like give yourself some descriptors, or what would you like to be described as? <laughs> I don't know. I was born here, Okay. but raised in Japan, so I'm like Japanese 
ish <laughs> ish yeah 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 okay yeah in the beginning of this episode we're talking about um the proa and really just briefly going over how we got to where we are right now and i was trying to look for some like information on like when the first car came here i'm not sure if i just wasn't looking hard enough but i couldn't find anything but i know that in like the early 20th century we had like you know the sugar king put in the the railroads right there were street cards apparently in in Rhoda. And from my limited understanding, street cars are like trolleys or like what like what's in San Francisco. Correct me if I'm wrong, because this is an open discussion with yeah, people. Yeah. So yeah. Um so we we've definitely made a few jumps here and there from mm-hmm. from, you know, voyaging the seas and then getting a little bit industrialized with our with our railroads and our yeah. actual automobiles. We are seeing the beginning of a new understanding really of what that looks like or what that can or how it can like fit into other people's lives mm-hmm. especially on a small island like this yeah, yeah but i'm getting ahead of myself actually i just wanted to, i wanted to get a little bit more into to who you are okay yeah just like as a pacifica yeah yeah okay or just everything <laughs> um i'm a operations manager at pacifica insurance mm-hmm. and i'm actually here to um introduce that we are launching a um first commercial ev charging station in Susupi, mm-hmm. like right next to our uh, office. Fantastic. We're partnershiping with Evolution, Evolution Energy, Evolution Energy from, uh, there's a company from Hawaii. They have a, bar- a variety of uh, different types of uh, EV chargers. And we have one that will be trying to launch in, in like September. Fantastic. So very, 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 very soon. Mm-hmm. I would love to just get a little bit into 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 your background as a as an individual, though, mm-hmm. because I okay. think your you know your story is very interesting. You said you were born here, mm-hmm. but then you grew up in Japan. Yes. So what part of Japan did you grow up in? I was uh, raised in a prefecture called Miyagi Prefecture. Mm-hmm. It's like north of uh, Tokyo. North of Tokyo. It's okay. about three hours by bullet train to oh, the north. Yeah. Okay. Fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's one thing we don't have. Yeah. I actually want, okay, we'll get into this later, but I did want to talk about how the fact that Japan's transportation system is just so, well, I would say actually the world's transportation systems are a lot better mm-hmm. than America's. When did you make the transition to, from Japan to over here? I was here for high school. So what happened is in my region that there was a tsunami. Oh. Yeah, so my school stopped and um, I, my family here in Saipan was kind of worried about the the nuclear. Mm-hmm. Just recently, do you know about the water? Yeah, the water. Yeah, it's pretty safe though. Like if you see the number, it's kind of low. But yeah, that's something different topic. But um, <laughs> so anyways, the tsunami happened, and um, also I wanted to learn more English, mm. so I moved here on my uh junior year. Where did you go to high school? GCA. GCA. Okay. Yeah, okay. Proud GCA. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say was your biggest kind of like um, adjustment that you needed to make when moving here? Besides the weather. <laughs> English. 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 Yeah. Oh, English yeah. is, yeah. Yeah, that's that. English was the thing because I was taking ESL, right? Mm-hmm. ESL. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to take that after class. And, you know, my friends are like been in this island for a whole time and they, mm-hmm. they already have their group and their friendship and you know and just come in like second you know uh second year before graduating i had to like have you know that skill to communicate with people to you know be friends and everything mm-hmm. i still kind of have my my japanese english but hey as long as we can understand what you're yeah, saying thank you. as long as we get the message across that's all that really matters yeah, but yeah that was my struggle i guess the like language okay yeah well i mean you seem to have it pretty pretty down pat now thank you so thank you so let's let's talk a little bit about about our roots, our origins. Okay. Actually, I would love to talk about, let's talk about Japan a little bit in terms of like, I guess ancient times would be the right the right term. Because the Japanese had ships, right? I think so. Okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm trying, I'm trying to find a parallel between like, you know, ancient Chamorros and then like in Japan, what were they doing at that time? Going like explore. Yeah. One thing I know like interesting about the, like, the boat mm-hmm. in Japan is that uh, like transportation for goods. Mm, so trade. Yeah, yeah, as a trade, even mm-hmm. in domestically, the boats is really, you know, mm. uh, how to say it, like efficient mm. because you can carry a lot of stuff on one, one time, right? Like mm-hmm. rather than like carrying by your hand or like pulling with the horses. Yeah. So they have this like a water, like a, I don't know how to say English, it's like a man-made river. Oh, like irrigation? Is it irrigation? Yeah. 
I I think that's something I know that has to do with agriculture. <laughs> we both don't know the word. Yeah. <laughs> so. so I told you that my place in it's in the north, right? Yeah. And we also ha- we are also like a port city. Mm-hmm. And as I said, it's three hours by bullet train mm. now. Yeah. So. Oh wow! So during then, yeah. during the old time, like the mm-hmm. Edo period, I think, or mm-hmm. after. Uh, the main transportation, like bringing goods, is by land, right? Yeah. But they also wanted to bring with the boats. That's you know that's more stuff that they can carry in one mm-hmm. time. <laughs> but if you're going to like a out sea, there's waves, you know, there's currents, so mm-hmm. it's kind of hard. Yeah. So there's actually a system that they made the river connected to each other inland, oh, yeah. so that they don't have to get affected by the current and everything. Smart, smart. Yeah, and. When I was in college in in Japan, I discovered that that my town was actually like if you look into like map, it's actually connected with the river all the way to Tokyo. Oh wow! Yeah, I I think a lot of people doesn't know this. Can you still like go down that river? Uh, I think you can. Yeah. But like you have to like come out in the sea and just go back to the nearest. Mm. But those small rivers are man-made. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Irrigation. I don't know. But yeah. yeah. I know that's like to get water to crops. So, okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. Maybe a little bit different. Yeah. It's like the same concept. Yeah. But like you're, it doesn't. Mo- you're moving more stuff. Yeah. 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 And more, I, more interesting God. part. <laughs> so, yeah. No. I love history. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Please, yeah. Please, please, yeah. please. I, I, I welcome that very yeah. much. So, yeah. So, actually, my town, mm-hmm. uh, when Japan opened up their border mm-hmm. during the Meiji era, mm-hmm. it's like after the Edo, like which is like the Tokyo the center, mm-hmm. uh, they open up to the world. Like before that, they're you know isolating their stuff. Like they don't allow foreigners to come to Japan. Yeah, yeah. And when they open up, they see on the map that my region has a big port, mm-hmm. and it was actually close to U.S. Mm. So they wanted to become make a like an international port. And that they saw that the, the small river was connected to Tokyo, so it was kind of like essential, like make a huge international port in my town called Ishinomaki, mm-hmm. and get the goods from you know Japan uh, from the U.S. to our town, our city. Then from there they can use that small river to go bring it to Tokyo. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like most populated place at that time, right? Yeah, like even yeah. now, but um, yeah. they tried to do the construction and two times like Taihu hit and they stopped, and they were going to do the construction the third time. Japan imported a train system, railroad, railroad, railroad system. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they were like, "Oh, never mind. We don't need to use the the river anymore." So <laughs> they stopped. So yeah, actually, yeah. in my town, there's a village called like New Town, mm-hmm. like a we call it Shimachi, New Town. So that was the time that the Meiji government was trying to build a town, but now it's like nothing. Oh, okay. It's like nothing. So it's just like abandoned. Yeah, abandoned. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. But for it's kind of like make me dream. Like this is the kind of thing that makes me like history is that if there's no typhoon, if they were able to make that, oh, town, yeah, yeah. maybe my region become like a city of Yokohama. I don't know mm-hmm. if you know Yokohama. I I know of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like an international port. Yeah, yeah. 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 History is very very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were they importing from America? Oh. Steel. Maybe. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm just like, what does anyone want from America? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you know, mostly technology, just like the railroad, I think it's... Was that an American? That was, like, was that like a strictly American thing? I, I don't know. I'm not okay. sure. But... We're not scholars. Yeah. We're just having a discussion here, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But that's, that's very interesting. Do you know what Japan was giving to America? Uh, I think it's like a, like a clothing. Oh. Uh-huh. Like mm-hmm. the, you know, the, you make it from the, um, the worm. Produce. Silk. Silk. Oh, yeah, silk. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Just yeah. like China, like silk, silk, oh, okay. silk road. Also, Japan used to export a lot of uh, silver, I think. Silver? Yeah. Oh, interesting. I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and don't quote us on this. Yeah. All right. That's that's really fascinating. Yeah. What was our what was our opening with that? Oh, we were trying to find a parallel between the, the voyaging of the of the Yeah, area. you start talking okay. about Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I wasn't really able to find that much deep or like really, really detailed information about how things were brought or when they were brought mm-hmm. in terms of transportation. Like I know we, we obviously had animals, like the Spanish brought over a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, Carabao. Yeah. Carabao. Yeah, Carabao. Oh, oh, yeah. Are, are they? I think so. Oh my God. Are they, <laughs> are they endemic? here or is endemic indigenous um are they you know are they naturally here that's a good question yeah 
Recently, I went to Philippines. Yeah. And I see a lot of them. Really? Yeah. I, I think that was like my first time to see like, actual Carabao, like, and it was so interesting. Like, Me too. I always forget that they exist. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I only see like back of Guam. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I'm just like, oh. Yeah. Mythical unicorn. Yeah. I think we're, we are at a point now where it's very, I think the world's at a point now where it's very imperative where we, where we seek out uh, or just at least consider uh, different forms of, of transportation, different mm -hmm. forms of getting around. Global warming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like the Maui fires and like yeah, the, there's right. fires in like Canada. Canada. Yeah. July was the hottest ever month like, of the entire. Since yeah. existence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Since like the dinosaurs. Yeah. So and we're experiencing that right now. So it doesn't right. feel that different to me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Granted, I mean, for in like you mean in Saipan or like in Saipan? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm just like I'm I feel sure. like it, yeah. The same. <laughs> I'd rather stay here because I don't like the heat yeah. outside the world. Yeah. Like US and it's, Japan. Yeah, that you can like like fry eggs on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. It's great. <laughs> okay that's a party trick <laughs> all right <laughs> it's very different now you know it's it's obviously and and there's new forms of technology there's new ways of doing things and more efficient ways of doing things more sustainable ways of doing things mm -hmm. enter the electric vehicle which is something that is still i don't know like mainstream fairly recent yeah like i think what the prius came out like what 20 years ago yeah i think yeah I think was so. it in japan before it was in america i'm sure it was i'm pretty sure yeah yeah okay well, then again, I mean, America's yeah. behind a lot of other But, you people. know, previous is not, like, fully electric. Right? It's not. It's yeah, not. But so. it's, it was very much, like, one of the first iterations right. of something available to the, to the regular yeah. consumer. We're just a species that keeps moving forward. So yeah. now we're, we're looking at something that is completely electrically mm -hmm. powered. Like, full disclosure, I'm very, like, nothing. Like, nothing. like okay. I don't know anything about, about electric vehicles other than the fact that they're electric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you give us a little bit of like a crash course for, for people who are not really in the know? Okay. Like what are the most important points that you would tell a person who is not familiar with this? Okay. I like to use a uh, smartphone. Mm. It's pretty much just like your smartphone. Okay. Like, you know, you use it, which means as you drive it and you just charge it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty simple. Yeah. But it's a vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much that's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Simple. if you think about more details, you know, it's really quiet. Um, mm -hmm. uh, like compared to gas in your car, mm -hmm. you just plug in your house so you don't have to like line up for the gas station. Yeah. Uh, you don't smell the gas anymore. Um, and when I first time when I drove it, I kind of felt like, you know, I'm not producing CO2. Okay. You know, that's a good feeling. It's just like uh, you're playing with your, um, what do you call that? switch no the game boy the, no the cart the electric oh <laughs> what do you call that thing i get remote uh, a remote R control car rc car is it rc car I guess. yeah okay well, there's a lot car. of words we don't know yeah <laughs> in this episode you know you um, just put battery and like you know remotely play with it like, yeah save a lot of time uh-huh i would imagine yeah even the gas in the car mm -hmm. that's the part i really like oh yeah once every like, two weeks fill it up, like to fill it up yeah okay. right <laughs> once once every two weeks or mm -hmm. you know two, three times a month. Mm. So you don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. You go home, plug in, charge it. You know, next day you just have to drive it and it's really fully, you know, charge, saving your time. Yeah. Because <laughs> we need more of that. We, we love we love more time yeah. to do other things. <laughs> yeah. How long have you had your particular vehicle? Uh, it's going to be one year next month. One year also, so fairly, fairly new. Yeah. And it's something that you would say is definitely, it like adds to the quality of your life, obviously. Yes. Like from, yes. Yeah, you would say. Like the driving is really smooth. Mm -hmm. It's like really fast. Like mm -hmm. like if you have a, kind of like a, you're riding a sport car. Mm -hmm. But I think it's the regular um, EV cars is all like that because it's not an engine. Like, yeah. You know, engines, like you have to build up the, the you know, like changing gear and everything, mm -hmm. even the automatic. But EV is a motor, so it's like, boom, and it's quiet. Mm. Was this something that you were interested in for a while, or was it kind of just like recently came on your radar and you're like, that looks cool? Um, <laughs> yes, and ever since I was in, when I went to college in Hawaii, that's the first time that I saw the EV in oh, my okay. life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was driving with my cousin, and my cousin said, oh, that's like the, the first Tesla that came in Hawaii. Like, he showed me, like, he's also into cars. So he's the one that actually showed me that that's the first Tesla in Hawaii. And that, like that, that I, particular one. Yeah, because he knows, you <laughs> wow, know, he okay. knows. So in yeah. town, there's like only two e 
Tesla. Yeah. And that's not one. Like, Interesting. And I was like so cool. And mm. like I start searching it. And I was like, okay, Tesla is my dream car. So, mm. and that was like almost like 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah. They've been making Teslas that long? Yeah. Pretty oh, much, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I'm just like, I don't know. So, it was something that's been on your radar for a while. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. So, you obviously were talking about benefits, like just, um, you know, it saves you time. You have to, there's so much less you have to consider with an EV vehicle. Is that redundant? Should I just say electric vehicle? I'm just saying electric vehicle. I'm or, saying electric yeah, vehicle. Or vehicle. EV. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> electric. Uh, with an electric vehicle, there's just so much less that you necessarily need to. You're talking about maintenance. Like there's not as much, it's not as fussy as like a regular, no, no, no. as a traditional car. In terms of like benefits and how, because I really want to explore like how would the would this kind of technology benefit us as a community specifically? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, if you're if you're living in like LA, if you're living in, in another like a really populous city, if you have a really really long commute, I can definitely see how that's just like a no brainer. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, oh, I can definitely see. This. I don't even need to think about why this is going to be beneficial to my life. Mm -hmm. But like, if you're living here, would the sales pitch kind of be the same, or would are there like specific benefits that you see personally? I'm not, I mean, you're not a salesman of this mm -hmm, car, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but. But like yeah, that, that you can think of personally that like, oh, I can see that how this can be beneficial in, in this particular area to our to this community that we're trying to serve. I do. I'm not quite sure about that uh, information that I have, but um, I heard about like U.S. Virgin Island mm -hmm. there. I, th I heard that there's a system that um, there's so many public charging station and they, how they generate power is they mostly use. They're another, they're another territory right there. Right? Yeah. Okay. They are. They are. <laughs> yes. Yes. Shout out to the U.S. Virgin Islands. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Continue. Yeah. So what they do is uh, they generate power from solar mm. and daytime. Mm -hmm. When you charge your car, mm -hmm. the solar will charge your car fully. Right. Yeah. Because you you know you're not gonna be driving your car all day long. Right. You go to store or just stay in the house or you go to office maybe eight hours five hours you just leave your car there. You know, it's if you just plug it, you can fully charge, right? Mm -hmm, That's simple. Mm -hmm. Um, and what happened is that okay. they'll take off your electricity from your car. Oh, yeah, okay. And okay. it's gonna power the house. Uh, That's what I heard. Okay, I'm not, I'm not quite cool, sure, cool, but cool, cool, cool. You know, it makes sense because the car has a huge battery, mm -hmm. so it can store a lot of uh, electricity there. So daytime, you just you know generate power from the solar, which is a natural. You know, after the sun is set, you use that power to power the house. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Because I heard that batteries are more expensive. It could be in, ex more expensive than solar itself. You mean like here specifically? Yeah. I was going to say everything. Everywhere. Expensive. Everywhere. Oh, yeah. I'm just, especially like, here. Everything <laughs> is, yeah, everything is expensive. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But um, the batteries are really expensive just to have a battery. Yeah. So they, they always have to depend on, on CUC. Mm. But I'm just thinking, you know, if you have a car that you use it daytime and you have a solar, just charge your car when fully charged um at night you can just use the battery from your car to power your house i, I also heard uh, saw this uh, article that this person in arizona or pennsylvania mm. um so far i'm <laughs> sure just, I know, it's like... Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 but um yeah the person was able to try um use the ev car for two three days to power, to the, house. power the house yeah wow, okay yeah that's pretty substantial. So that's come something, you know, like we experience you two and solar, mm -hmm. you know, people didn't have power. <laughs> yes. But we were you here for summer. both of those? No, I wasn't. <sighs> I think I came after you solar. missed out. <laughs> <laughs> it was a party. Yeah. Um, you came after solar. Alarm. Okay. Yeah. I was there for both. Wow. Yeah. You're in good times. Yeah. But now good I feel time. like I feel like really resilient. I'm just like, oh, OK. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, experience the natural disaster is kind of like, mm -hmm. it's better to have it in your life because you can be prepared for is next it? time. <laughs> you know, because, you know, there's always a natural disaster and we can't, we never kind of like, as in like Japanese thing, you know, we always oh, have yeah, a yeah, yeah. earthquake mm -hmm. and my region was hit mm -hmm. by tsunami. Yeah. And, you know, so it's better to have a Very preparation. True. So can we talk a little bit about like what is, what is being done now? Or something very very specific that we're going to discuss but like what do you do you personally know of anything else that's being done in order to facilitate this transition from traditional automobiles to electrical electric vehicles in the Marianas? if you've been to the states you see many places that have a ev charging station like everywhere like the supermarket um there's a charging station that itself that just you know just go there and charge your car so 
we're trying to like be the first one, I guess, to yeah. promote that in the island, like how it's gonna look like, uh, how it's gonna be utilized, or how it's gonna be benefiting the community. So that we're gonna do also promotion to open the public uh, for one year. So one year uh, free of charge of using that uh, charging station. So that uh, whoever have a EV cars, they can go there and just charge it and use it like how you know useful is uh, public you know public charging station is mm -hmm. like you know, and it's gonna be located in Joten Susupi, and uh, you just charge your car there, and you can go shopping at Joten shop at Ace or come to Pacifica and get some shameless insur <laughs> <laughs> insurance quotation or, you know, go to Isla or mm. there's Kilibi office and there's a the library. Shop. Yes. <laughs> yes. Actually, so it's kind of like close to the library. So, you know, you can go read a book or yeah. yeah. Cool. Is there a plan to expand that to other locations as well? So the partnership that we have, Evolution Energy, mm -hmm. uh, they're planning to have more chargers on the island. They already have their like business license here, so they're like ready to launch their business here in the CNMI. Mm -hmm. Evolution Energy is also introducing 10% discount for the first 10 company that who is interested in doing the charging, oh. EV charging station mm -hmm. in the island. Um, they do the installation, they do um, management of the uh, the charger. So it's really easy. Like the, the charger that we use is, I just go online and it's connected and um, I can see like how much usage were there. And I also can control the time of use. Like for example, ours is gonna be four to, I'm sorry, from uh, Monday to Friday, uh, nine to 4 p.m. 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to charge your car anytime. And we just ask like one hour limited use, but um, I can also do that everything online. Like you just, you know, it's easy. Yeah. yeah. Pacifica Go Green and Evolution Energy have come together to give the CNMI its very first electric vehicle charging station located next to the Pacifica Insurance offices and across from the Joten Kitsu Public Library. This historical feat is just one of many of Pacifica Insurance's Go Green initiatives, which aim to promote eco-awareness and sustainability in our islands. To celebrate this momentous occasion, Pacifica Insurance is offering its charging services to the public at no cost to you. Just download the Juice Pass app on your smartphone, plug in the charger to your vehicle, and experience the newest and most efficient way to make moves in the Marianas. The charging station is compatible with electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids manufactured for the U.S. market and will be open from Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., with a one-hour charging time limit per vehicle. To learn more about Pacifica Go Green initiatives, as well as the many ways in which Pacifica Insurance can help to secure your peace of mind, visit their website at www.pacificains.com, their Instagram, at Pacifica Insurance, or their Facebook at facebook.com slash Pacifica Insurance Underwriters. But the pro, at least from what I understand about it, you know, was meant to take us on voyages. Mm -hmm. So we as a people, uh, as indigenous people, that's like in our blood. It's very much it, it, a part of our spirit to go off and like explore yeah, and right. just be a part of the world. Mm -hmm. Speaking from that perspective of us being voyagers, quote unquote voyagers in the literal and figurative sense, mm -hmm. how do you feel EV is kind of helping us continue that legacy? Since, you know, our island, we don't have a public transportation. So we're like, you know, living in the car society, right? I mean, even in the States, of course, but um, we need to go someplace to one place to one place. And since, you know, there's also, we call it now, what, like global boiling? Oh, right man. it's not a that's horrible global warming right <laughs> it's global that's boiling now bleak <laughs> yeah and you know we really depend on the nature just like the typhoon and everything the disaster but um we're living in like like if you look in the google map it's simply like we're you know we're middle of the ocean and we really depend on the nature so having an ev i guess it's not affecting the environment mm -hmm. i guess mm -hmm. Right, because you're not like burning the fuel. Yeah. Right? Uh, but I also understand that the cars in uh, that we have in the island is mostly uh, like regular EV. I mean, uh, regular SUVs and like small cars. So it's kind of hard to go off road, right? 
Yes. Yeah, and we are like <laughs> we're living in a truck island, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So eventually, yeah. everything has happened come late, but um, uh, I know that there's some, like Ford have the Lightning and everything, like a new pickup EVs that are coming in. Oh, truck versions. Yeah. Wow. So if we have that, like for example, me, I like to go hike. Mm -hmm. So just like I said about myself, or the um, Barbie, like slippers and oh, yeah. swimming suit and yeah, yeah. tank top. Mm -hmm. That's my outfit actually to go to Forbidden Island. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I just went like yesterday too. And going to Forbidden, if you know, it's like kind of like you have to go to the rough road. And I'm it's just... treacherous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just need a EV truck in the future. Oh yeah, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So I use a different car to go there. So, so we were talking a lot about you know the evolution of transportation, where we've come from, where what we've experienced, what we're currently in the midst of right now in terms of how we get around. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're also having conversations about sustainability and, and you know um, green energy and and being more, I guess, conscious of how we affect the earth yeah. and the planet. So I just want to ask you again, a very, this is this is a broad question um, that doesn't necessarily need to have like roots in reality. It can be pretty, it can be idealistic if you want it to be. But do you have any personal visions of what the Marianas could be or, or what potential it holds in terms of transportation and like technological advancement and sustainability? Do you see seeds being planted that could grow into something a lot more substantial in the future? Like, what do you, do you have any visions of that? Like, what we could become? Like, could we become the next blah, blah, blah? Or are we, like, paving our own way to become something yeah. unique? I always like to compare, you know, it's our, like, uh, brother island, right? Like, Hawaii is. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Hawaii is also uh, always dealing with um, natural disasters, just like the, the recent wildfire also, but they also have volcanoes and everything. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, limited resources, right? Like the electricity is not 100% like made in Hawaii. Just like us, we have to bring the fuel to run our jet, uh, our... I never thought about that. Yeah. You know, uh, what's that? Power, power plant? Power plant. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> power plant. You know, it's not going to be run by so fuel. Yeah, so yeah. we really depend on the outside resources mm -hmm. to power everything. But if we can transition that to like solar wind power even like you know you can make power from the wave yes like you float something in the ocean mm -hmm. that can like generate the power yeah, right? yeah that's what's so frustrating though it's like the, the technology exists it's yeah. here it's yeah. been here for like decades yeah you know and with us being this like having an abundance mm -hmm. of solar energy an abundance of i don't know about wave energy because our, our lagoon makes the tide weird but right. like like if yeah. we put it out there you know like past the lagoon something um yeah <laughs> But sorry, continue. Yeah, eventually, like I think Hawaii is more advanced in like solar system, and they're trying to implement more. Um, also for like a plastic, you know, there's plastic, plastic trash that you know the tourists is you know doing it, uh, dropping, and that won't go back to the nature for like what fifty years or something like hundred years to. Oh, that's like a thousand. Is there oh, like, yeah, like, like five? Like, like yeah. when we're way dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like Hawaii, like there's no styrofoam containers, right? There's not. Like, no. Congratulations. Yeah. I love you, Hawaii. <laughs> Shout out to Kaiser High School, class of 2010. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also like plastic bottles. I think they banned plastic bottles. That's fantastic. So no more water. Yeah. Water plastic bottle is banned. So I think it's like paper pack right now. I'm not sure. Like a juice box. Yeah. 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 That's cool. That, that's what I heard recently about Hawaii. Like really advancing of that. Like Of, the, of course, uh, plastic um bags are not allowed, right? Like. I know that Jotin does like uh, Taza Plastic Tuesdays. So I see a lot of customers that <laughs> kind of, you know, um, doesn't like <laughs> putting it in like a... In like a box? Yeah. 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 Oh, people, like, I understand. Yeah. I understand the convenience factor, but I don't know. It's yeah. not It's not that big of a deal to just bring your own bag. <laughs> yeah. Not only plastic, but seeing a trash in the, you know, in the street. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah. So. You see like those videos of like turtles and yeah. seals and everything. Yeah. I watched The Little Mermaid recently, which is like my favorite. And I was just like, I can't really enjoy this because I think think of all the plastic that's in there. Yeah. But then again, actually, no, 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 no. The movie was set like in the 1800s. <laughs> it was just, yeah. It was, yeah. It was, it was, it was no plastic. Yeah, no plastic back then. It was, it was a lot nicer. Like me, I like to go forbidden. 
uh, once in a while. So I just this is my thing. But when I go hiking for fun, I just do fun. Like mm -hmm. I even even see trash, I don't take, pick it up. Like yeah. I separate myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one time, like I when I feel like okay, today's a day for me to pick up a trash. Mm -hmm. I just go there. I just picking trash. Yeah, and just bring back. Like, That's wonderful. You know, it's really small thing, but I think it will make difference if we all think. You know. Think about something. It's you know? just it's just a change in attitude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's another thing. I mean, in Japan, their trash their trash system is amazing too. Yeah, yeah. Right? Is, or at least it's like really. Yeah, it, you don't find it on the streets. I'm sure that that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I also heard like a lot of uh, foreign tourists are confused by the trash system. Yeah, yeah, like the trash in the train station. There's so many like different you know place to put your trash. Is like like which one to like you know do it everything and. Again, I'm just like, people just need to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> if you like give it like 20 seconds, I'm sure you can like figure it out. And yeah. even, if, in, even if not, like, I don't know. I, I, I never really get people who are kind of just like so anti-earth, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can't like spare like 30 <laughs> seconds yeah. to figure out which bin to put it in. Yeah. If we talk about like pro mm -hmm. and like transportation was EV. I mean, like back then it's like transportation was hard, right? Mm -hmm. But now if you think about it, like from here, we can go to Korea or we can go to Hawaii or the States or Japan. Like, you know, it's got easier. Mm -hmm. But I think we are come to this point that we need to rethink about using more technology to save the earth. I don't have to say that. Like, <laughs> that, that was fine. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Save you know, the earth. Like, you know, it was hard back then to transport stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. But now it become kind of easy. So we're just adding the technology to make that transportation more environmental friendly, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, we are in the burning fuel society right now, but eventually I think the EV can replace it because it's the same thing, right? Like driving a car, this mm -hmm. is driving a car, yeah. basically. But you're not burning a fuel and that fuel for EV, we might be able to generate by putting a solar, mm -hmm. which means that we don't have to go outside world to get that, you know, gas, bring it here, yeah. burning it in the um, power plant to provide, you know, electricity. So a goal of this podcast is to unite our listeners, our brothers and sisters of the Marianas, indigenous local community members, diaspora, uh, through a sense of pride and empowerment for and because of these islands that we have all shared at one point in time or another. Um, do you have like a message you can give to the people that aligns with this goal can you give us a piece of personal wisdom or advice or like words of support can you make the community feel better <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what i'm asking i would say like your your action matters i'm just saying for like this environmental you know concept your small things really matters it can affect the entire future mm -hmm. of our islands like what i said like forbidden island i love to go there yeah but I, I was going to Forbidden since I was high school and I can see there's a difference of the um, landscape of Forbidden. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like more land of Saipan is kind of like scraping down. Yeah. Like if you've been to Forbidden, you see that there's this uh, huge um, hill. Mm. You can see the hill that like the dirt is like you know, little by little scraping off. Yeah. This is on the Saipan side. It's like, you know, there's a Saipan and Forbidden Island, right? In mm -hmm. the middle, there's like a swimming pool that you can swim in. But the Saipan side, whenever there's like a typhoon or a stormy day, I can see the difference of that, that landscape is changing. And that landscape is not, not gonna go back anymore because yeah. it's falling apart. Unless a volcano erupts. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Which is not, again, like the best. Yeah, but right. <laughs> But yeah. you know that's that's kind of thing like action. I think it, it will affect the future. Mm -hmm. And whatever you do now, you do something in the future, and it's not gonna recover. I think mm -hmm. it's not gonna recover. It is possible that we can try the future people or like you know our next generation can you know have a new technology to recover something. But whatever you do will will affect um, the future. So. Yeah. I think we just have to be keep in mind that you know whatever you do like think of others because we are in this small tiny island in the pacific uh living together living each other and like you know uh we don't want to 
lose this, right? Like, think of the kids. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got. I, I, I mean, I don't yeah. have kids, but yeah. Me neither. <laughs> just, just be nice to nature. I guess I would yes. say, like, you know, just try. Don't try. Try to throw, throw, crush. There you go. <laughs> what I do is, like, I don't want to, you know, dirty my hands. So <laughs> I see a trash, <laughs> and there's no like trash bin out around, and I just gonna, I might be like, next time. Next time, yeah. If it's still there, yeah. But if I see a trash bin, I was like, I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna throw it, and I'm like, gonna wash my hands later. Like, there you go. But that's like something. Well, small I mean, thing, like, right? yeah. What 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 you can do within your capacity. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. Because everyone, that's the thing about like the one thing I will give grace to is with this whole climate, this climate crisis is that it's a very it's a luxury for people to think like that. You yeah. know, for it's a very big luxury for people to have that be a concern of theirs right. because there's so many people who are who have this not saying that this is not a pressing matter it's absolutely pressing if anything it's one of the most pressing matters mm -hmm. in human history because we're all going to be affected by it yeah. but like in your day-to-day -day experience we're not feeling the effects of climate change day after day at mm -hmm. least not in its full force just yeah. yet yeah. shout out to you arizona but like <laughs> um you know so people it's not really like people don't see it manifesting in front of them yeah so obviously your 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 concerns are going to be like how am i going to feed my family how am i going to mm -hmm. pay my bills and the best the right. fastest quickest way that i can do that it's the yeah. best way for me which is fine like that's you know we grew we're a part of a system that kind of just makes it that way mm -hmm. and it's not you know and i don't really look down or i, I don't want to be too like preachy about it with people who are in situations where they have more pressing matters at yeah. hand just just what you said like i just recently went to philippines mm. and um my ate mm. my my i, I said i call it my filipina mom i went to her um birthplace which mm. is like in the mountain wow and cool. they do have a power but um they don't have like a kitchen like yeah. it's an outdoor kitchen mm -hmm. and they cook me some food but that time they use charcoal Oh, nice. It's kind of like that thing. That's yeah. that's the usual like like power source of like heat. source of yeah heat. Yeah. yeah, it's a charcoal. Yeah, and you know I I'm I'm, oh, I'm, I'm sure it'd be really hard to get a stove up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for us it's like you know we, we're living in the U.S. and like there's so many powers and like, we have AC. Uh -huh. First world problems. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Shigeki. This was a very, very enriching conversation. Would you like to let the audience know where they can reach you spiritually, socially? <laughs> yeah. I'll, you I'll don't have to. Office. <laughs> okay, okay, there. <laughs> that's that's good enough. Our Instagram, we post a lot of stuff. Um, okay. Whenever there's an update on our company stuff, and you know, you can see our Instagram. Mm -hmm. If you would like more We670 content, you can head over to our Instagram at We670IG, our TikTok at We670TT. Before we sign off, we would like to once again thank the sponsor of this episode, Pacifica Insurance Underwriters, insuring and assuring the CNMI since 1973. They, along with Evolution Energy, have made history by bringing the first ever electric vehicle charging station to Saipan. And as a gift to the community, the charging station will be free to use. So head over with your electric vehicle and be a part of the greener, grander future of our islands. To learn more about the EV charging station, as well as the many ways in which Pacific Insurance can help you secure your peace of mind, head over to their website, www.pacificains.com. Their Instagram at Pacifica Insurance or their Facebook at facebook.com slash Pacifica Insurance Underwriters. We, of course, cannot forget to thank our lovely patrons for their generous contributions. A special shout out to the newest member of the patron family, Nicola Bria. Thank you so much, Nicole, for helping us to tell our stories. If you would like to support the efforts of We670, as well as gain access to exclusive patron only bonus and behind the scenes content, head over to patreon.com slash we670. As always, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. I'm so glad that you've chosen to be on this journey with us, and I am very excited for everything we have yet to learn and discover together. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye. Bye.